Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the two hour chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. And there's a couple of trend lines we've drawn in here. We've got the primary downtrend line from about 37.5 down to where we are around 28, 27.8. The other trend line is this rising trend line we have here. Breached a little bit recently and we're waiting to see. So you can see this is a very tight resolution area here now that we're getting into and uh, so it looks to be coming up on a resolution. I would guess it's going to be a fairly significant move one way or the other. Whether we break down through 26 and go all the way down from there or whether we break up and start getting up through 30. Uh, it's a coin toss at this point, but I do expect that will be a significant move. Now, the other chart we have on here is JP Morgan, and they're definitely going to be the topic of the night. As you know, JP Morgan, a lot of people have speculated about the price of silver and the correlation between the JP Morgan stock price and the question is why would they be in such a tight range I, I've actually done the overlay here we'll remove the uh, all the indicators so you can see a, a closer overlay and um, you can see it's a fairly tight correlation the JP Morgan stock is starting down in kind of a new down leg here and silver may follow it so if we go out to I think I think it breaks down if you get to the very very wide view so it doesn't hold up in a long-term view but uh, in a shorter term view say eight hours it uh, is more valid now we're going to talk quite a bit about more about JP Morgan when we get to the uh, topic of the night. Before I do that, I want to jump over to some of the other charts here. Of course, one of the key, absolute keys, is going to be the euro. You can see that it is, as, as expected, it's uh, collapsed below this support line around 126. And you can see we're down, down around 123. So the euro is still falling. Uh, no end in sight on that one and if you remember the long-term place where it came from uh, there's still a lot of ways to go to get back to there so it's quite possible we could do one of these as well I think uh, the whole world is expecting the euro to collapse and so that may be kind of a contrary in play that brings us one of these. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I think it's a failed experiment already. But w as to whether or not it collapses, I, I can't say. There certainly is a lot of downside potential for it. But uh, until it gets, it really needs to get below this and this as well. And there's quite a ways to go before it does that. The other chart that's really key had a big move today is oil and you can see it's down around this is the WTI and you can see that it's down around 87.5 so this blip here that you see that is uh, that's a big move and uh, so we would expect to see the prices come down at the pump but I would say don't hold your breath as I watch the prices at the pump they always seem to uh, bounce back very quickly when oil rallies and then they're very slow to decline I guess that's to be expected they're trying to make as much money as they can so those are the important charts of the day I want to get to the question of the day and this is from William Lawley and he asks brother John F with silver hovering at artificial lows, at what price do the various silver mining operations 
set aside the segregated ores to delay processing due to the in viability of production or in the case of all silver mines when do they stop production altogether at some point during this artificial artificially downward price manipulation the cost of production has to force operations to shut down recognizing that different countries have different operating costs I understand there is no one spot price where this will occur but generally speaking what are our views on this matter now that's an excellent excellent question and, and as I sat and thought about it it really brought something to mind that I've never really considered before and that's that what you frequently hear about the uh, price and elasticity of uh, silver is that uh, they'll tell you that uh, silver is very price and elastic because 70% of silver is mined as a byproduct of other metals. So whether they're mining copper or zinc or whatever they are, then they get the silver as a byproduct. So they're going after one thing and they're getting another. But that begs the question that I think he's hinting at here that is really important and I never really thought of it before. And that's the question of why. Why is it that silver is primarily mined as a byproduct? of other metals. Could it be that what he's referring to has already happened in that it is no longer profitable to mine strictly silver except in the absolutely most uh, perfect uh, veins that are out there which apparently are few and far between. So if you remember I've spoken a lot about the Comstock load and that was those gigantic veins of blue uh, ore that uh, they discovered but my guess is that there probably are quite a few silver mines out there but uh, it's just not worth it to mine the silver so I think it's a probably a good chance that what he's referring to has already occurred and if we had a realistic market price for silver then we probably would see strict uh, strictly silver mines uh, mines that are done just uh, just for going after the silver and then the other metals would end up being byproducts of the silver so I think the 70 percent silver being mined as a byproduct is already an indication that uh, we are going in that direction of where artificially low prices are making it unprofitable to mine silver. So let's get over to the main story of the night and I'm gonna call this JP more gone because apparently there's gonna be a lot more gone in the JP Morgan fiasco uh, than was initially reported this is breaking news on Zero Hedge. It was broken initially by Bloomberg, and it's uh, about the JPM fiasco. Now, basically what they're reporting here is that uh, this guy, um, this kind of, and it's always a rogue trader. They always find some guy to scapegoat. In this case, it's this Bruno Ixil, and the big issue here is how they were valuing. Well, how they basically how they're valuing the hedge book. Well, we know the hedge book. I think wasn't the hedge book quote as being seventy trillion or something like that. So uh, the the whole thing uh, is so ridiculous. You know, when you have something as big as seventy trillion dollars, they're talking about you know which side of it the bid or the ask you value it on, and and when you're talking seventy trillion dollars, you can probably swing a trillion one way or the other. So it's really kind of absurd when you think about it. But just using kind of a common sense, skeptical way of looking at it, we already know that uh, Bear Stearns blew up 
in uh, 2008. And if you remember, the first two things that blew up were those hedge books that they had. Remember, they had those two separate hedge funds that uh, they tried to wall off from the rest of the firm because they knew they were going to go belly up because of their derivative exposure. And uh, I'm not sure how much of the silver short was involved with that. And uh, I don't know how much the silver short with JP Morgan is involved with this. But if you remember, those two kind of blew up first, and then you had the whole firm blow up later. Maybe I think it was a month later, it, eventually the whole firm blew up. So this may be something like that, but it's a long article, so I certainly don't have time to read it. But um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that uh, with the $70 trillion, we already know common sense tells you that uh, this whole big thing is a racket. So the real question is not, you know, how much money has JP Morgan lost or how how much uh, of a black hole is there. But the real question is why is it coming out and uh, who is behind it coming out. That's really the only issue because that's the way it is in politics and banking. If you remember, I'll, to give you an example, uh, many of you remember the scandal with Blagojevich, Rob Blagojevich, and supposedly Blagojevich offered to sell a Senate seat or something like that. Uh, but what's not very frequently reported in the news, of course, is that the day before the FBI came and arrested Blagojevich, he was standing on a factory floor in Chicago and he was threatening Bank of America and he told Bank of America because Bank of America was pulling the loans on this uh, factory that was being shut down and Blagojevich basically threatened them and he said that the state of uh, Illinois will no longer do business with Bank of America uh, to uh, try to rectify that situation and of course you know the story the next day he was arrested he was indicted so the uh, the question is not are they crooks because we know that 99% of them are crooks 99% of the politicians are crooks 99% of the bankers are crooks the question is what did they do to uh, have the uh, hammer brought down on them and who is bringing the hammer down those are the two key questions that need to be answered not uh, the details about JP Morgan's 70 trillion dollar derivative book which we all know is going to blow up and they're all going to blow up uh, eventually Morgan Stanley and uh, all the rest of them so the question is who is coming down on JP Morgan and what did JP Morgan do and how big is this and I think it's going to turn out to be a lot bigger now I wanted to show you some of the first I want to start out with a chart we had the cross over there of JP Morgan and silver but if we pull out to the two-year chart you can see that uh, JP Morgan still hovering about 125 billion dollar market cap but you can see they're on a rapid decline if you remember Bear Stearns the Bear Stearns uh, the price of the stock when it was collapsing it traded at sixty dollars on Thursday it traded down to thirty dollars on Friday and they opened it at two dollars on Monday so uh, it could be quite possible for JP Morgan to do something similar to that this actually looks uh, very close to the type of chart that uh, Stearns was at when uh, it all started to fall apart so it's quite possible that this could fall apart in a similar manner. I think the market cap of uh, Bear Stearns was near $100 billion before the major decline started. Now, if you look at J.P. Morgan and you look at the key statistics, there's some things that pop out at you. Uh, the first is, anytime you compare these companies, if you go and look at Cisco or if you go and look at uh, Microsoft or if you go and look at Apple, you'll see they have a whole bunch of cash and zero debt. Or there's a lot of companies you'll see they have uh, some cash and some debt. 
What's interesting about JP Morgan is you can see they have a market cap of around $100 billion, but they have $729 billion worth of debt and $869 billion worth of cash. So that's kind of strange there. Why why would you have numbers like that? Those are those are really strange. And and just as there's a lot of room for error in the margins with the seven hundred trillion dollar or seventy trillion dollar uh, derivative book, there's a lot of room for error with these debts. The other thing that stands out at you is that here's a company that supposedly has ninety billion dollars in revenues, and that's just an enormous number. They have a gross profit of $89.66 billion. But then the earnings before interest, taxes, and uh, I think that's dividends. Uh, let's see. Uh, it doesn't give the definition, but I think that's what that is. Is not available. And then we come out with a net income of $17.45 billion. So who knows what the real books are. They're all kind of fishy and uh, it but it does appear that JP Morgan has angered someone and it also does appear that JP Morgan is going to soon be coming out especially with this breaking news scandal tonight is soon going to be coming out with an admission that quite a lot more money than two billion dollars uh, is has been lost and uh, so We'll call them J.P. Morgan at this point. And so back to the euro, the uh, the situation is pretty grim on the euro. Um, we're waiting to see if the Lindsey Williams scenario uh, turns out to be true. If you remember, Lindsey Williams predicted that you would see a collapse and bank runs in the euro and then you would have roughly two weeks time before you would see a complete dollar collapse and bank runs in the United States. So uh, if this uh, collapse in the euro is somehow related to what's happening at Morgan and of course JP Morgan is the is the biggest fish it's the t it's the biggest of the too big to fail so obviously if someone's gunning for them which it appears they are, then uh, it, it may be that they're gunning to bring down this whole system. So that's, of course, where we get to silver and gold. Silver and gold uh, are no one else's liability. So physical silver and gold are assets that you own. And if we do get a type of catastrophic collapse, then uh, who knows what they're going to be worth. Uh, but they're going to be worth a lot more than what they are right now. And we'll talk to you next time.